in thinking about this idea that we can think of this as this um, being one of the dimensions and this then the next level is the next dimension and then the next level is the third dimension um, and so when I think about it this way um, <coughs> what I remember is that this outer dimension has to have a definite value uh, to integrate against those and then these inner dimensions can have variables um, so if I look at the the text I see that we can think of this innermost integral as basically representing uh, a um, a y value so if we uh, evaluate this integral we know that it's going to be equal to um, y yeah if I just write these these are not going to change but this if it inner integral evaluated is just going to be equal to y evaluated at 0 to x plus z dx dz um, so that that will just equal x plus z minus 0 dx dz or in other words we're looking at x plus z dx dz now um, I can think of this in three dimensions as basically this guy right here being my y value and then these are the other two dimensions so um, I know in my x z plane that the bounds of integration are going to be from x equals 0 to x equal to z and then from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 I'm sorry z equal to 0 z equal to 1 okay so the first thing I know is that I have y is a function of x and z and my the y is um, is equal to x plus z so I can create that plane and then to make it a little bit easier to visualize I can make it a little more transparent um, and I can move that around if I want to so that's what that's the the y value that I'm evaluating in my integral and then I evaluate that from x equals 0 to x equals z so I just add my limits in here x um, is equal to 0 and then x is equal to 0z and I can see that that creates this sort of these boundaries um, and then I know that I further have another boundary the z goes from 0 to 1 so I add z from 0 to 1 so these all together create a kind of prism um, and I can if I want to figure out what the boundaries of integration are for this prism using a different uh, order of integration um, I, I, I left off the z equals 0 there's that one there what I can do is I can view this from the um, from the uh, direction where I'm looking at just the x z plane so I'm look interested in the x z plane and I can stop viewing the y value so it doesn't get in my way but as you can see that my limits of in it oh, oh, apparently this keeps moving um, this helps me see my uh, limits of integration let's see how do I just oh here we go again I'm just wanting to view that from the in the, in the y direction and so now if I want to change the order of integration what I can do is write this let's say I keep that the same and now I want to integrate z first and then x second so this is not going to change 
this y value uh, stays inside here. But now, what is my boundaries for integrating on z? Well, to do this, it's helpful to actually view this from the direction of the x z plane. So we know that z in this image um, would, integrating with z first, the lower bound of z, again, we're going to in integrate that on constant y value, so the lower bound of z would start here. Um, or in other words, along it would start on the x where z equals x, and it would end at z equals 1. If I were to draw a little graph of that, it would look something like this, where over here I have x, we have z, and this, um, the boundary here looks like this, the lower bound, so z in this case equals x as the lower bound, and z equals 1 as the upper bound. And then if we look at integrating with respect to x, um, again looking at the, the, th the calc plot, the boundary is here, and it ends here. So with respect to x, it goes from x equals 0 to 1. Okay, one more time, I'm just going to draw in the first, in this inner case here, we're going to use these as the boundaries of integration and cut this up in little d y, dz elements. And again, we're multiplying this y value here um, that you can't see, but it's that's being, that y value across this base is being added up. And then when we use this outer integral, we're going from, from here, <coughs> x equals 0, to x equal 1. Now we don't have to worry about this line because we've already accounted for that in the inner integral. So we're just going from 0 out to 1. <coughs>